how to pick the right camera for YouTube and video production. Very nice guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to compare the Canon EOS M3, which I have been using for several years right now to make all my YouTube videos uh, against the Canon EOS RP. And the main difference between the upgrade to the Canon EOS RP is A, that the Canon EOS M is an APS-C size sensor, while the Canon EOS RP is a full frame sensor. So that offers a variety of uh, benefits and I'm quickly gonna walk you to the advantages and disadvantages of both. And mainly the advantages you can gain from switching to a full frame. So while the APS-C that I've been using for so long works quite well, uh, it also has some disadvantages, mainly with my old EOS M3, what I found, the microphone input doesn't sound as good as on the more high quality uh, cameras, as well as the lens, because the lens, if I zoom in, it changes from F3 to F4 and higher. However, with the newly designed Canon EOS RP, you have the advantage that they have totally different lenses. Here, for example, I have a really terrific kit lens included, and that kit lens is really amazing because I can zoom in all the way and it still will stay at F4. So that's really nice. For example, when I do product reviews, I'm doing a lot of these overhead shots where I zoom in while I show you some product on my desk. And with the old EOS M, obviously the more I zoom in, the less light will hit the sensor, so the ISO has to adjust, uh, as opposed to with the full frame and that really nice quality lens, I can zoom in all the way and I retain the same amount of light. Uh, so I also have the nice shallow depth of field. So that's uh, also a thing, the shallow depth of field is better on these full frame sensor cameras. And in the kit, as you can see, here's also the adapter for the EF mount lenses. So I like to work with the mirrorless systems, but if you still have some of these other lenses, the older ones, uh, in this particular kit, an adapter is included for free, which is very nice. But I have to say, this lens is really terrific. I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos myself and people were always talking, oh, Canon glass, Canon glass. And I was just like, uh, what the heck are you talking about? Because I mean, with the, even with the old EOS M3, I got pretty good results with the APS-C and that small, tiny lens. But I really have to say, having looked at that lens, and tested it, uh, some footage. It was really, really, really good. I mean, really good, amazing build quality. That's a huge step up from a small system to such a bigger system. So I wanna share this with you. If you're familiar with my videos, right now you're watching the introductory part. Next up, I'm gonna do an unboxing, show you what's inside the package of the Canon EOS RP. And then in part three, I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the footage and maybe you can see the difference why I like this EOS RP more and also like I told you the mic input uh, is better on these um, pricier cameras and one thing because this is basically not for if you're into the photography that that the video is not for you it's really for video guys so I'm also gonna after going outside and shooting test footage in part three maybe I'm gonna do a part 3b and talk a little bit about codecs <laughs> because obviously video codecs are very important when you want to edit your footage or when you want to retain the most amount of quality. So a little bit about codecs is important as well. And then in part four, I'm gonna do a summary and conclusion. Guys, awesome for tuning in, very exciting. I'm really looking forward to exploring this Canon EOS RP with you and shooting some very nice footage outside. So let's get rolling with the unboxing. Now guys, very exciting to have a closer look at the Canon EOS RP kit. And uh, yeah, one thing I noticed, for example, right now I'm shooting with the M3 and the ISO is I think at 1000, at 2000. So uh, you should see on the black here that the picture quality is not perfect. That's something I noticed with the APS-C size camera. I think until ISO 1000, maybe a little bit higher, you can get away with it. But if you keep pushing it beyond that, you introduce more noise into the picture. So with the full frame, that, should, that will be considerably better. Simple because it has a bigger sensor and you can capture more light in 
yeah, non-favorable conditions such as right now. So that's the EF adapter. Like I told you, I don't have EF lenses. So it's nice they include it nonetheless if you at one point want to get the EF lens. Let me put this other box to the side. Guys, it's packaged twice. Yeah, so better microphone input on the RP and flipping this around once more. Uh, they, sheet of paper with some information the eos rp manual then the same battery on, on the eos m is also on the rp which is kind of a very small battery but yeah let's see what the performance is going to be like charger power cable nothing too special but what's nice is you get a carrying bag for your lens it seems very nice useful to have and lens hood so that was not included with the EOS M, but it's included with the EOS RP and the carrying strap. So quickly moving on, you have the kit lens, which is a terrific kit lens. I really like this lens. It's a huge step up and the camera body. So again, let's put the box to the side and then we have both on the desks. And maybe you already noticed, since I removed that black box, the ISO right now has changed to 500. So the, the image quality should much look much nicer right now. So let's quickly take the lens out and the camera body as well. Very, very, very nice lens. It's a heavy lens, so that's not lightweight. I would almost say well, the lens may be heavier than the camera body. So let me check this real quick. Well, sort of, I mean, the lens feels much, much heavier than what I used before. The camera body itself, if you only have the camera body in your hand, I mean, the quality feels great. Although I feel it's a little bit short for my hands. I saw they have an additional gri grip handle. So I think together with the lens, it's probably pretty heavy to keep this with three hands. So I'm gonna figure this out, how to do this. So build quality, like always, is nice. One thing I also noticed, the, I think they moved the menu button to up here. With the EOS M3, that was different. The menu button was down here, so that maybe it's a little bit of change in the navigation. Again, flip out screen, really great to have. If you want to do vlogging, you can flip this around like that. Or also when you're doing the product reviews like I am doing right now, if you sit on the table and you explain something, you want to be able to look up. So if you're filming like this, you can twist that display and look into it. Although. Admittedly, I have to say, you don't get everything because once you flip out the screen, you also have to consider you have to use the mic input. So you have to use the mic input here. So the cable is always going to be, uh, as soon as you use the flip out screen, a little bit in the way. So let's say you have the microphone up here, the cable goes down there. Maybe the best thing I, I do, I just overlay a picture right here so you know exactly what I mean. So with that, with that, guys, I told you the basics, let's quickly put on the lens. And as you can see here, massive, massive sensor. This sensor is so much bigger than APS-C. So that's gonna give you superior image performance. And yeah, the lens, obviously amazing build quality. So let's quickly unlock this here. And then you have a dedicated switch for stabilizer. So that's very, very nice. You can manually switch. So if I'm on a tripod, obviously I want to switch it off. But if I quickly grab the camera from the tripod and I want to run around, show you something, I just switch the stabilizer on, film. I can film with this handhold. And then after I put it back on a tripod, I just put it back and switch it off. So that's really, really handy. And that ring here, you can program that uh, with the software. You just go and usually I like to put ISO on that ring. So very, very nice lens with a constant F4. So just quickly line this up and twist it a little bit and it snaps into place. And holding it in my head right now, it feels considerably more heavy. So it's the combination that makes it, makes it heavier. But yeah, I mean, you, can, you can grab it pretty nicely. If you're a photographer, obviously I'm a video dude, so that's gonna be different, but I think the constant F4 is nice. If I have that on my desk, I, I zoom in, it's the constant F4, the ISO doesn't have to change. The autofocus should be better than the M3 and a lot more light should come in and I have the better improved audio input. So with the video codex, I still have to see, but other than that, this concludes the unboxing part of the Canon EOS RP. Let me zoom in one more time. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch to 
part 2B and I'm going to show you the menu what you can set because obviously if you want to shoot video it's a little bit different than just snapping pictures so there are a few settings that you want to keep in mind when shooting videos so I'm going to walk you to my personal favorites I've been using Canon for years I think I know pretty well what works for me when shooting videos so that's what's gonna be up next and then we can go outside and do some side-by-side -side comparisons with the old APS-C versus this new full frame so very exciting let's jump to the next part terrific right now we jump to part 2b and i'm quickly going to walk you through some of the settings uh, on the one hand you have settings i think that are really absolutely mandatory for video you definitely should follow those settings on the other hand you have some personal preferences so let's just start with the first thing that I would set when picking a camera like that. So right now I'm using 30 frames per second. Uh, obviously you could also change from NTSC to PAR, then the settings would change accordingly. Notice that it uses an IPB codec. In my opinion, IPB is not perfect for video editing. On most modern PCs, the IPB will work fine. However, I, much pre I would have much more preferred if Canon would have included the all eye codec that would have made more sense in my opinion. So full HD, that's what I'm mostly gonna use this for. Uh, the important part that I wanna point out is that when you pick a frame rate, uh, follow this, uh, I think you call it 180 degree shutter rule. So set the shutter speed to twice the frame rate that you're shooting at. In my case, that's 160th. If you would shoot in 25 frames, it would be 150th. So that's the first thing I would set. And then everything else, uh, basically autofocus, that's also what I played around with a little bit. And you can go over, whoops, here. So, hey okay, guys, I'm jumping around a little bit. So autofocus, I, I picked to face tracking. And then I tested it once with the eye detection disabled and enabled and what i found is that I, if you turn on the eye detection the autofocus works much more reliably and then the second difference i also found um, usually i like to use auto iso so if i move the camera around there's a different lighting situation or i hold something in front of the camera that's a little bit darker the automatic iso does a pretty good job keep in mind most of the time i'm shooting with a constant f4 so that I have a nice shallow depth of field. So I want to maintain that. So if those two values are fixed, it's only the ISO that can float around. But um, you don't see that meter here. And with the, the EOS M, I had the meter always, always visible. So that was a little bit tricky. I first had to look, okay, where do I find this meter settings? I was so used to it. So if you're coming from a Canon that has that feature, then obviously I always could push that star button and the meter would show up but after a couple of seconds uh, it would disappear so that drove me a little bit nuts but luckily you can go in the menu as well and i think it's here metering timer and that was set by the factory on a very very low value um, so i only assuming some people they don't want to see that meter i'm very used to the meter and that's something in the eos m i think that was totally different so that might be just a small thing so that's not super important uh, what's more important is this really function that you can switch on the stabilizer. So if you're using this handheld, I feel the stabilizer does a really, really good job stabilizing the images. Granted, maybe it's a little bit more optimized on, for photography than video work. And probably if you have a Panasonic GH5 with in-body in image stabilization, as well as the stabilized lens, then you have that combination that would be even better. But for what it's worth, I think the stabilizer does a really good job. So, but I let it, I switch it off. Uh, it consumes some battery, saves some battery life. Uh, obviously it will draw more power if the lens image stabilization is turned on. And other than that, guys, that's about it. That's the most important settings that you can pick. You also see it has the nice uh, volume. So if you connect an external mic, you always can see what your levels are at so that nothing is peaking. You have a separate volume for headphones and the volume for the microphone input. Um, I think it's way more fine grain the way you can select it. 
Um, I even had this with the Canon EOS M that if I turned the sensitivity of my wireless lav mic system all the way up, it would be too powerful for the EOS M. And here I have more flexibility of changing this. So that's the first overview of the menu. Why don't we just head outside and shoot some test footage and compare the EOS RP versus the EOS M. And guys, I went outside to the first test that I'm going to do right now for you is a handhold test while walking, uh, only using the image stabilization from the lens to see how well of a job the camera does. When you handhold it, and shoot some video. And obviously I can also zoom in for a little bit here. And yeah, even if you zoom in all the way, it still produces surprisingly smooth footage. So the image stabilization with the kit lines definitely gives, I give that a thumbs up. So let's compare uh, the EOS RP against the smaller APS-C size EOS M3 as well. Now guys, I'm doing the exactly same test with the Canon EOS M3. You're seeing the M3 right now with the software image stabilization. And from my experience, uh, this cam, the smaller APS-C one, also does a pretty good job when you are handhold and walking. The biggest difference comes when you, right now, zoom in. Uh, you lose that shallow depth of field because the kit lens that comes with the M3 is not a constant f4. So right now, zoomed in, I'm at f5.6. So the shallow depth of field is much, much lower than with a full frame sensor using a constant f4. So yeah, so far so good. Let's do some other test shots. So right now we're going to do a color comparison. Obviously you have a bunch of different settings that you can pick on the cams, but uh, yeah, a lot of people have said that the Canon colors are very, very pleasing and I can only attest to that. So yeah, I'm going to compare that at home and see how the colors look like. Again, uh, the image is pretty well stabilized and the colors look, uh, I think, amazing. Now guys, for you a te second test shot, uh, right now with the Canon EOS M3 and uh, yeah that's also one thing you want to keep in mind if you're shooting with different cameras from different brands that might give you a little bit of trouble with the color grading and uh, if you stay within the Canon system that's what I found maybe the colors don't look exactly the same uh, but uh, it's pretty close so the images are interchangeable if you shoot with one camera and then another one you can uh, stitch together the footage and it will st look still pretty reasonable. So that's the color test of the Canon EOS M3 of the fancy red Tesla. And now guys, I went outside for you to test the Canon EOS RP and what I'm going to do is to show you how much of a background blur you can get with a APS-C sized camera, uh, with a full frame camera versus an APS-C sized camera. And you see a little bit of that grass right here, moving in the wind. And uh, I think it's a really, really nice background blur. That's really unique to these full frame cameras. And what I'm gonna do is just in a second, I'm gonna switch over to the, my old EOS M, which has the APS-C size sensor. And then we're gonna compare what kind of background blur you get. And I hope because it's windy, you don't hear that wind. So let's switch over to the other cam. Now guys, I switched over to the Canon EOS M3, a really, my really old APS-C size camera. And let me zoom in a little bit on that grass here in the front. Let's see. Ah, so you notice the focus of the Canon EOS M is not as reliable. And uh, yeah, let's see what background brown blur we get. I mean, you get background blur as well. I mean, you probably know that my product reviews usually have a background blur, but uh, yeah, as to be expected, the full frame camera usually does a better job when, when you want that background blur, which for stylistic purposes, uh, I think is really cool. So let's shoot some other shots as well with this uh, tiny little cam versus the big full frame. And guys, here's second test shot. So you can see the colors that come out of this Ken EOS RP and so far, I'm really liking it. It is a little bit heavier than the APS-C size one, 
but it should yield a much much nicer crisper image quality and let me zoom in for you a little bit here and uh, yeah the camera does a terrific job it's all handhold and it should look reasonably smooth so you can imagine if you take pictures that this camera should do a terrific job but uh, yeah you see full frame video performance uh, is quite decent and uh, it should be look pretty pleasant to the eye so let's pick some more test shots now guys i picked a second uh, color test here of this fancy uh, european style bicycle with the brown wood accents so again software image stabilization and i'm zooming in a little bit and uh yeah it looks pretty nice it goes to show you can work with both cameras and get pretty good results and uh yeah i mean i figured the color is going to look a little bit different uh, i i think you should be able to get uh, always better results with the full frame sensor as opposed to the smaller APS-C size one. But then again, you have the trade-off. Uh, I mean, the old EOS M3 is just much, much lighter. So something you can carry around much easier. It's also more inconspicuous. Uh, as soon as you bust out the EOS RP, you always look a little bit more serious and professional. So let's see what else I can find. But so far, this looks pretty exciting. Hey guys, I switched over to the Ken EOS RP and uh, I apologize for the wind noise. Uh, I forgot the, the wind fur and there's also some party going on, some festival in the background. So they switched on some music. I hope this doesn't carry through. From my first impression, I really think the RP makes a nicer picture. I mean, look at the clouds. I mean, this looks amazing. And uh, yeah, you can still see the birds flying around. And uh, the music in the background is like, this is not so good. So guys, I'm gonna cut this short and, uh, but you see, it looks very, very nice. And the sun is also changing. So guys, it's not a perfect test, but you get the point. Nice quality. And I really wanna film these birds there. I really like those birds, so. They're always catching insects in the air. It's one of my favorite ones. So this, uh, I think, almost concludes the test of these both cameras. And guys, a uh, very serene place here at the water that I found. And you have these birds flying around everywhere. Really nice to watch. Very calm. So let's zoom in. Maybe I can capture that. You can see them sitting there. And uh, yeah, both cameras seem to do a really, really good job shooting video footage. There's some crows coming, coming out there as well. So yeah, I really think these cameras are great to do some photography as well as videography. And the colors look amazing, guys. Look at the colors and even the water. So really terrific cameras both the EOS M3 and APS-C size ones as well as the full frame, the EOS RP. Now guys, I found a scene there to test a little bit the dynamic range. Dynamic range shot, you see there's like a little bit of an art installation uh, on the bridge here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty dark under the bridge, but uh, there in the background, you see it's pretty bright. Although the sun is slowly disappearing. So let me zoom in a little bit here for you to see how that looks like. And uh, yeah, you're right now seeing the Ken EOS RP. And I think the image looks pretty amazing so far. So yeah, I mean, I can zoom in all the way, see how the focus works. And again, guys, this is all just handhold. It's handhold. That's literally all I'm doing. People enjoying their time on the water. Always nice to see. So zoom out a little bit again. And uh, I'm very, very happy with this camera. I think it's terrific. The images look great. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but uh, otherwise I like it. So this concludes the test of the Ken EOS RP versus the Ken EOS M3. 
Terrific guys, this concludes my comparison of the Ken EOS RP versus the APS-C size Ken EOS M, the old camera that I was using so far. And as you have seen, the image quality of the EOS RP, in my opinion, is consider considerably better. And uh, always take in mind, I mean, I'm uploading this to YouTube, so YouTube usually reduces the bitrate. But from what I've looked at at home with the full bitrate at my computer, I really like the image quality way, way more that comes out of the RP. And uh, that goes to show that the full frame sensor does produce a better image quality. Now, you gotta keep in mind, if you're just making videos for YouTube and you're just starting out, maybe a full frame camera can be overkill, unless you know you wanna do it seriously over the long term. Yeah, for example, uh, like uh, me or other many other YouTubers. But uh, you have to be a little bit, you have to develop like a little bit of a critical eye to really watch for these details. I mean, someone else, they might not even notice that if they don't have the direct comparison. So that's really up to you. Uh, I gave you some footage and uh, the image stabilization. Now granted, I cannot say 100%. Did I hold it exactly the same way? Obviously, if you walk, maybe once you shake a little bit more, once you shake a little bit less, but I think the image, I only keep in mind, I only turn on the image stabilization in the lens of the Canon EOS RP. So you can also switch on a software stabilization on top of that. So that should give you a very, very smooth image. I think it's totally workable, especially if you practice walking a little bit or calmly, then that will improve as well. And after having said so much positive things that I like about the EOS RP, like for example, the mic levels that you see, that's really useful. You talk and you see the mic levels there. Uh, one downside that I noticed is when you're picking a camera and you want to do primarily video with it, then obviously codecs are important. And uh, the downside with the RP is that it only has the H.264 IPB codec, which is a little bit disappointing, especially since I think some older Canon cameras, I don't know whether it was the ADD, but some of the older cameras, or at least I saw one, that had the all i codec and basically if you want to do video editing for example on the go on your notebook if you want something that's less demanding on your computer the there's a difference between using an intra codec or an inter codec so basically how that works the one codec let's say you have three frames it reduces the size by kind of combining these frames predictively so while you get, while you save about one third of the data, it's also more demanding on your computer when you start editing it. So personally, I prefer the all i codec or even ProRes because that way you have each individual frame. And uh, yeah, while the data size is three times as big, it makes it much, much smoother when you're editing. And uh, if you're just the occasional video shooter, the occasional editor, that might not sound like very much, but if you spend a lot, a lot of your time editing, that can be a real convenience feature. And unfortunately, only the Canon EOS R does have that all I. So let me quickly compare this to you. Up there, you see the RP, which only has the IPB. And down here, you can see the Canon EOS R has way more options. Yes, you can also use the IPB on the EOS R, but the EOS R also offers the all I. And the EOS R even offers C log. That's another thing that the can EOS R doesn't offer. And you could even use C-Log with an external recorder and record ProRes. So overall, I still think the EOS R gives you more flexibility when it comes to external recording and codecs. So the EOS R is probably more targeted at, let's say you have the absolute beginner, the absolute beginner with YouTube videos might start with an APS-C sensor. Then once you're a little bit more sophisticated, maybe you switch to an entry-level full frame, such as the EOS RP. And if you want to get, get super professional, or at least to step it up one step further, you go to the third option. You use the Canon EOS R with C-Log and an external recorder. Obviously, you have to always keep in mind, does this make economic sense for you? Because the cameras get bigger, the price gets <laughs> steeper, and it also makes your, it can also make your workflow more complicated and time consuming. Because obviously if you shoot in C-Log, you really have to know what you're doing. And that's a little bit more of a professional thing. And if you use an external recorder with 10-bit recording, meaning you do HDR content, then obviously you may also want to have an HDR monitor and those are very pricey. So I think the EOS, R is, R, the EOS RP is some healthy balance in between 
for people who don't want to go all out serious with C-Log or external recorders. So uh, that's my take on this. Otherwise, uh, I really like this camera, terrific. And uh, I also invite you to head over to my channel page. I show this to you here in the section for video. You find a bunch of other reviews. I also reviewed a Sony and an Nikon and a bunch of other video gear. You can also look in the audio section for lavalier microphones and USB interfaces. So I have a bunch of useful reviews for you there that my viewers like to compare the gear before they get anything. Because obviously the higher you step it up, the more pricey it will get. So you gotta have a strategy how to recoup that investment, guys. Uh, terrific for tuning in. If you have any questions, let me in the comments below and I'm gonna see to it that I get some more cameras to test. I'm very curious to see, for example, how the EOS R performs. So maybe I'm gonna test this next. All the best to you. I see you as a subscriber in the next video. Take care. And if you want, you can also head over to my channel page. I have a bunch of different playlists, audio equipment, video equipment, and even these uh, two-way radios right here. So you can check those out as well and learn in generally more about audio, video equipment, and a bunch of other gear. Guys, I'm, I'm really amazed about how many people have already subscribed to my channel because of the useful content that I provide here. If you want, you can subscribe right now as well. I see you in the next video. All the best to you. Take care.